All right, we're in Lychee Slicer, and there's multiple ways to add files. We just created some STLs from the previous video. So if I want to bring those in, I can click here and say Add Files and just navigate to the folder. You can go in here to File, Import 3D Files, Control-I for Import, and you can just drag and drop uh, into your scene. So I just drop these STL files in here, and there we go. We don't need this one. And you may have noticed it started you out in this library area here. Uh, we'll talk about this a little bit later, but if you want to drop things in from here, like if you want to get this test file here, you can just click that and then it'll have it on move automatically and then you can move uh, this object in here. So let's go in here to the objects list over here and you can see, okay, it dropped in this new file here. If I don't want like the original build volume, I can just select that and hit delete. Same thing with this file here. We're not going to print that out. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit delete. And now you can see we have all of our objects in here. I can double click and rename this if I want to. I can select multiple, so just shift select through here, or control select individuals. You can turn off visibility for all your selected objects or turn it back on. If you have the pro version, you can click here to add uh, notes for this object. And you have this little drop down menu that'll give you a little bit more information on those individual objects. Now, because I put this in move by default, you can go in here and you can say, okay, let's center all of our objects. You can make sure they're all on the platform, which they all are. If you want to select objects in here, you can also just kind of click through and select them, drag select to select all of them, move them around. You can say arrange all. It'll go ahead and move them around. Then I can say on platform and that'll push them back down so they're all sitting right on that platform there. And of course you can also put it back to the original uh, file position, which is just that skull sitting there like we exported it. Now, another really cool thing about Lychee is you can actually update these files. So when you see it, you know, have these objects selected, you see over here, you have an object editor with browse and update file. And you also have auto update. So if I go back into like we were previously in ZBrush and I wanted to change anything about this eyeball left or eyeball right or the skull or the jaw, I could go ahead and make those changes, re-export the STL. And if you have auto update on, it'll automatically update in Lychee. If you don't, you can just browse to that file, double click it, and then update this object. Now you're gonna see there's also uh, structural issues. There's nothing to repair. When I decimated it down, everything came in nice and clean. However, if you have an object and it comes in a little light pinkish, it'll also have a little exclamation point over here. All you have to do is go over here and hit fix. It'll close any holes it needs to, and then your file will be good to go and it should be a nice light blue for you to click on. Now I've been navigating around without talking about it, so let's talk about navigation. Super easy, right click to pan around your object. Now you can right click on an object in order to get these quick access options in here like duplicating or deleting an object or moving. You can also see right here you have hotkeys for these. So move is a T, you think of it as a transpose I suppose. Arrange is A, rotate is R, mirror is M, and scale is S. You can also go up here to these menus and you can say object, you know, auto orientation, alt shift O. Here's all your hotkeys for move, arrange, rotate, scale, and mirror. Show and hide objects, V. Duplicate, Alt-D, and then support stuff down here, which we'll get to in a bit. So, and these these will also change. So we have our workflow here, so we're in the layout phase, and then eventually we get to prepare where we add our supports, and then finally exporting our file to our printer. You'll also notice it asked us, hey, do you, you've been working for a bit, do you want to go ahead and save your scene? And you're going to see two options, LYS and LYT. LYS is a full lychee file. That is going to be your lychee file with the models in it, in that file. So if I go here and say, okay, yeah, let's save an LYS file, just click that. And we'll say Gorilla Skull. And if I go back into that folder, you're going to see we have a LYS file that is 5 meg. However, if I go in here to File, Save Scene As, you're going to see here's where we can do our full scene. Control Shift S and then uh, the light scene is Control Alt S. So if we do a light scene, you're going to see it's going to change to the Grill Skull LYT. We'll go ahead and save that scene file. It saves really quickly. And you can see it's only 80K. So the difference between these is, again, the LYS, the full scene file, has the models in the file itself. So if you ever needed to hand this file off to somebody else, and they don't have your files locally on their machine to point to, then it save out an LYS full scene file. Uh, if you're just working locally, uh, you can save an LYT file and it's just going to load the Lychee file with all of the settings it needs and then it'll call in your files from the location on your computer. So it's gonna be a lighter scene file, but it's you're gonna need to have those files locally. Now back to navigation, uh, right mouse to tumble, middle mouse to pan, middle mouse button to scroll, super easy. You can also go up here, you're going to see there's a home button right here, which is Alt H. So you can click home, you can navigate around, do Alt H, and you can also select an object here and you can hit F 
to kind of frame that object in your screen here. And then you can go up here to top, and that'll take you to a top view. And then you can go in here to like a top, to kind of a top three quarter, and then a front view here. So you can use this navigation cube to go ahead and navigate. Now, if you click this little down arrow, you're going to see uh, you can turn orthographic on and off. And I actually work orthographically. If I want to look at the top of the object, I want to see it straight down, you know, so I can see if I'm hitting on my bounding box. However, by default, I think if you come in, um, perspective is going to be on by default. So here's perspective. So here I am looking top down. So now I'm looking in like a perspective view. But of course, I like to right click and say orthographic. You can also do it from the drop down arrow. Just turn orthographic on or off here. You can do flip camera. So here's from the bottom. Here's from the top. You can go into wireframe mode and normals mode and go home. Now, some of this you can also do from the right click menu. If I want to right click and go orthographic or perspective or flip camera or go home, it's all just in the right click out here menu. And even auto arrange all and redo. So now we know how to get around our file here. Uh, since it started us on move, we'll go ahead and talk about move. So if I go over here, again, we already have object select. You can just select all your objects. Uh, again, you can tap center. It'll put them center uh, on platform. Make sure all the objects are dropped to the platform. Arrange all is going to auto arrange all of your objects and original file position. You can go down here. So these are uh, in millimeters. You can click this and change that to inches if you'd like. And then let's hop back up here to select. And this is just selection mode. So you can select while you're in move mode or uh, in arrange mode. So here's arrange mode. And what arrange mode is, is essentially, it's only going to allow you to move in the X and Y axis in here. So it's only going to allow you to kind of slide these objects around uh, on the build plate here and rotate in Z. So it'll go ahead and keep you just sliding the objects around. And again, this one, if you want to put it down, you can go back in here to move say on platform and then go back to our range and that'll keep you just sliding around on that build platform and rotating on the build platform. Of course you can do the same thing in move. If you want to move in the Z axis you can use move instead and if you want to rotate in all degrees go down here to rotate and now you can freely rotate your objects around. You can also hold down shift if you want to snap to increments and then if you want to rotate based on your camera view it's that big outer ring there. Now there's some more rotate options that are really cool. Uh, so on plate is a really cool one. So if I have this one selected, you're gonna see a little green arrow. So jaw isn't selected. So click it to select it, that turns it blue. And then I'm gonna say, hey, this face right here that that arrow's sitting on, tap that and then put that on the platform. So I can very quickly go through here and say, hey, bottom of the mouth, select the head and then bottom of the mouth to the platform. If I want to reorient, orient my skull, again, I can go here to move and say, you know what, original file position. And I can also go in here to rotate. I can say, you know, reset rotation back to where it originally was. I can try auto orient, which again, we've talked about underneath object, object auto orientation. And you can just keep hitting that button or alt shift O and it'll just keep auto orienting your object until you get something that you like. But I'm going to go ahead and reset our orientation with our rotate. And we'll talk about, uh, we talked about on plate. So again, we can click on the bottom of the mouth here and say this normal, flip it around so that that goes onto the plate. Or if I want to do the back of the head, boop, there we go, right onto the plate. There's also O2O, which is object to object. So if I wanted to put, you know, the bottom of the mouth onto the top of this eyeball, I can do that. It's a little bit weird to show. So, I, you know, let's go to our library here. I'm going to drop in a cube. So now I have a cube here. And I'm going to skip a little bit. If I go down here to copy, you can say number of copies one. We'll set duplicate selection, and then we'll move, we'll move this over. So now we have two cubes in here. So now if I go back to rotate, say object to object, I can click this surface, and I want to whoop put the surface onto this surface here, like so. So this surface to that surface, this surface to that surface. Of course, I don't need either of those cubes, so I'm going to select them both here, and then hit delete. And if you don't want to see this objects menu, remember you can just click in here or you're going to close that X button out of there. One thing I should say about the objects I didn't say earlier uh, is you can go down here to this little gear icon and you can do sort by name. But anyway, we'll go ahead and close that view out. So back to rotate here, we have rotate on plate, object to object, auto orient, which we've already talked about, and then of course reset. And a lot of those two are just available to you when you're just in rotate mode with something selected. Here's reset, here's auto orient as well. And the numerical values, you can just type these things in. You can click the up and down arrow for very precise movement. Again, hold down shift to snap, however you wanna rotate. Now for scale, 
You can see we have reset scale, which we haven't really scaled up. So if I scale this up and then I say, hey, reset that back, it'll reset it back to your original scale value. And you can see that is at 100%. So when you brought it in, that is considered 100% scale. Uh, you also have millimeters and inches in scale, and you also have fit to bed. So now, if I do select all of these and I say fit to bed, it's going to fit every object to the bed. So I'm going to have huge eyeballs, huge jaw, and a tiny skull. So not what I want. But what you can do is you can say select the skull, say fit to bed. And you're going to see that new value is 225.75. So I can copy this value. Let's go back to our objects here. I'm going to select all my other objects. And I'm going to paste that value into here. And because I have this lock icon on, I can go ahead and say enter. And that'll go ahead and scale these up to also fit the same proportion uh, as, the, as the skull when I hit fit to bed. Now, if you did want to do a non-uniform scale, you can non-uniform scale in any axis that you want. We got everything scaled appropriately. Everything's at 225.75, and that's probably fine. Uh, copy, we've already talked about. So if I want to say copy this, I can go down here and copy. We can say, you know, I want two copies. Uh, we can say auto arrange or keep arrangement, and then we can just duplicate selection. You can hit T for transpose and then move these around and now we have three versions of our jaw. Of course, if I don't want those, just select them either in your viewport or in the list and then hit delete. And then we have mirror. So if I go up here to mirror, we have mirror X toggled on and it's the same across both sides. So that's not going to show anything, but here's mirror Y. So we can flip this on the Y axis and then the Z axis, or you can go up here and just tap these to mirror your object. And we have another really cool one here. So measure, you can go through here and if you needed a very precise distance, like, okay, this tooth from my measurement from here to here is uh, three millimeters. Oh, it's only 2.9. Well, you can come in here and you can say, okay, this distance right here, this very precise distance needs to be three millimeters. Just hit three and then enter. There you go. So now that measurement is three millimeters and it scaled your object to make sure that this distance was three millimeters. So you can very precisely scale if you have points on your model, you need to make sure the exact millimeter distance, this is how you can do that. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that. And just like I said, you can just click anywhere if you just want to do a quick measurement of something and be like, okay, yeah, that's correct. You can do that. And then you can use this to scale your object based on what that measurement needs to actually be. Uh, underneath under magic here, this is if you want to step through every single process for the layout and prepare automatically. So it'll automatically auto orient your object, add supports, optimize your supports, add bracing, rafts, based on the preset you want. And then you hit this button and it'll do everything for you. So I would look for this, of you know, once the once they get some, you know, AI and machine learning and everything it gets it all pixel perfect for exactly what you want. Uh, this could be all you'll ever need to do. Uh, in the meantime, you know, feel free to use these or some of these or none of these if you'd like. You know, you can turn these off and, you know, just, okay, just optimize my supports or whatever you want to do. But if you want to have everything, just dump it in here and have this do everything for you ready to print. Uh, this would be where you'd want to look. Now, speaking of the magic in here, you see there's audio orient orientation and auto support. You may be thinking like, well, what, what parameters are they using? That's under going to be under file preferences here. And there's a lot of really cool stuff in here. So here's your printing history, your auto saves, cloud saves. Here's your global settings. So when you open up Lightgene, it asks you to load your previous scene. You can turn that on or off in here. Your account, uh, printers and resins, we're going to get to in just a second. Uh, your shortcut editor. So here are your hotkeys. So if you want to change any of those, that's where you can do it different themes. Now here's your uh, auto arrange information, your auto support information, what it's pulling from when it does those decisions for you. Uh, island detector, which we'll get to in a bit. Export previews, 3D mouse, 3D navigation, 3D view. All of this you can change in your preferences. Oh, and I missed here. Here's another place where you can import your stuff. Sorry about that. So now let's talk about some of these buttons up here. So we got shop, which is coming soon as of this recording. Uh, we have 3D printer, which was in our preferences. So you can do preferences 3D printer, or you can click that 3D printer button, or down here in the lower left, you can actually see if you've already selected the 3D printer, this is where you can go and change your 3D printer and your resin. Uh, but we'll go ahead and hit 3D printer. Right now I'm using the uh, Nova 3D Benny 5. So I have that one added already. You can go in here to add, and there's a ton of manufacturers for you to choose from. Here, so you know, again, in the Nova 3D section or the Elegoo section, those are the two that I've done on my channel. You can go through here and pick the exact printer that you want, and then once you've added your printer, you can go and add resin. Uh, you see, I have some resin already set up, but let's say I didn't, so I can go in here to add new resin and go in here and say, you know what, it's a Elegoo printer 
for the Mars 2 Pro. We can say the Elegoo resin brand, what type it is, what color it is. And then you can choose through pages of these uh, already set up for you. So if you like one, you can, well, you can hover over to just view some quick details or you can click on the details button to get even more information. If you do like this one, you can add this to your profile. I'm gonna add it to my Elegoo Mars 2 Pro, hit copy. You can change any parameters in here that you'd like, any notes or comments that you'd like to make. Hit OK, and now when I go here, I have another option for me. So I can click on the printer, I can click on the brand, here's default, here's Elegoo, here's Rapid Gray, here's ABS Lite. They're both 50 microns, go in here to edit, and you can go in here and you can export these settings, you can go in here and copy, create a copy. So if you want to say, yeah, this is pretty good, I just want to make a few adjustments, but still keep this one, create a copy, and you can like this. But I'm gonna go ahead and stick with my Nova default that I've already set up here. And then when I click out of here, you're gonna see I'm using my Nova 3D Benny 5 with the resin that I have set up. Here's your history, here's your library, which we've already talked about, and then your import. And then like we've already said, we have our layout, prepare, and export. We're still in the layout phase. We're just having fun kind of getting our objects on there. But before we head into prepare, let's go ahead and do a little bit more on our layout. So first of all, I'm gonna go into my objects here and I'm just gonna say I left and I right, deleted. We didn't really need those to begin with. And now we can start orienting this on our uh, build platform here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on my objects, go in here to move, just say on platform, go into a range, and now I can just start arranging these objects. So I can select one object and then kind of move it into place and select another object, kind of move it into place. And if you, you know, want to scale these, then you got to go in here to scale and you can select all your objects. And then you can go in here and do a uniform scale, rotate your objects to get them to fit. You know, so I may take this one. And again, you can use your hotkeys, of course, just hit R to rotate, T to transpose. And once I move these in here, I may be like, ah, oh, you know what? I can scale these a little bit more. Again, you can select them all, hit S to go into scale. You can uniformly scale them up. T to transpose. You can go in here to top and right click and say orthographic. Everything's fit on there. Ah, let's scoot this in just a little bit more. And we're good to go. So let's say we're ready for our files. All of these are scaled. Let's go in here to scale. They're all set to 243.06. So they're all, they're gonna be compatible with each other and we're ready to head into our preparing. Now, we may be heading into layout because what happens is when we go into prepare, there's some things we need to think about while we're printing this out that may be beneficial or less scary to print, uh, but we'll cover those in the prepare section.